Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. While a lot of channels like to debate the reason, whether it's man-made, whether it's not man-made, um, the reasons, whether it's fake or not, um, we've shown here that very clearly something is going on down there. Um, the things that have been revealed, uh, we've shown hundreds of locations, and even if all of them are not, um, just odds would say that at least a dozen to two dozen are for sure something that wasn't visible even 20 to 25 years ago. This is the Totten Glacier. Recently, there's been, out a, been put out a report that it wasn't this glacier, but this was a good picture to show it, that... Somehow, during some of the worst storms down here, huge saltwater seas have opened up inside these glaciers, meaning the water's getting in from underneath. And once they compromise it that way, the loss of ice is just um, unstoppable. And there is a satellite that tracks this. Um, this is JPL's website. It's called Grace FO, Grace Follow On. And this is really a great website here. In fact, I think I'll probably be able to get away with giving you this link because it's just science and technology. It doesn't have anything to do with politics, but um, a great place to go and to find out all this information and see some really great imagery. Um, where we're going to be looking at today, this area here in the red, um, this is kind of turned sideways from what we normally do, but this is the area that I would describe as the 11 to 1130 region where all of this red is. I found some very interesting things. So without any further delay, um, I usually use three different maps just to kind of illustrate what we're doing. I haven't in quite a while. So this area up here by what they call the Antarctic Peninsula, where it kind of meets Argentina, we refer to this as 12 o'clock. So this is the region right here that we're going to be looking at. Just over here to 11, 1130. This map is uh, British. Uh, it's a topographical map. It's the uh, imagery of what the landmass looks like now after the years of the weight of the ice and the glaciers on top of it. This map over here that we use is 
an image of what this continent looked like before the ice damage. Now, strangely enough, if you invert the image and flip it around, it's very, very close to Australia. In fact, I've done it before. You can literally lay them right over each other, and it's almost identical. Um, but once again, if you are reading articles about Antarctica, basically the reason I used this the Antarctic Peninsula as uh, 12 o'clock or north, I mean, everywhere from the South Pole leaving is north. But if you use this, when they refer to East Antarctica, they're talking about this area over here to the right. When they talk about West Antarctica, of course, then they're talking about over here, and then the peninsula. So they usually refer to it in three different ways, East, West, and Peninsula. And that's basically the idea, so you know where you're looking at. Um, but once again, right here, this what looks like kind of an island um, that has pushed itself away from the mainland, um, off very far to the very... Uh, Western edge of it is what we're going to be looking at. So without any further delay, we'll go ahead and maximize this out. The first stop that I would like to make is, let me see if I can find it. Ah, there it is. We'll fly right to it. One of the reasons I use Google Earth Pro is you can look at things in different time meaning over history, you can look at them in different aspect, meaning from different angles, and you can see things that appear in some years that don't appear in others, and things that appear at certain angles that don't in others. You can also use light shading to reveal things that are hidden in shadow. Now, the reason I started out with this, this artificial port structure, is we'll zoom out real quick here from it, and as you can see, just looking at it straight down, you'd have no idea it was there. But when you zoom in and you tilt the camera, and this is a technique I've asked everyone who wants to participate in this to use, you see very clearly two very deep channel ports or entrance ways to a port. Because when you come up here to the where this ends, anyone who's lived anywhere near a body of water where ships come and dock you'll recognize these structures. These aren't natural. These are cut off perfectly square. These are docks. And no one has constructed this down here. And once again, all of these locations that I'm going to show today, I will give you specific coordinates for, and you can go look at this for yourself. And it's not any modern activity. This is the remnants of what used to be a seafaring civilization. We've showed this before. Now the next location is, you have to look at it just right, but tell me that's not an entrance. I mean, that's very clearly an entrance under the snow. And we'll get out a ruler to measure this and we'll see how large it is. I have it set to feet. Top to bottom, 800 feet. Left to right, 550 feet. Enormous, enormous doorway. Now, what it's for, I think a lot of people can speculate we have seen so much activity down here. I personally believe that there is an active civilization down there. These ice sheets, some of them in East Antarctica, are three miles thick. And we've shown even modern science has discovered caverns down there that are large enough that you could take off a plane and fly around inside the cavern and land with no problem. And three miles of ice is plenty. And water ice is one of those things that is very difficult to penetrate through with any type of um, accuracy and understand what's there. And even if they do know what's down there, it would be a great reason to keep anyone from going down there. I still wonder why Carrie went down there.
what possibly could have been the point. Unless maybe they are negotiating with a civilization down there that's much far advanced and there could be different things going on on the table that we don't know about. And like I said, all speculation, but given that we've covered this now since last October and uncovered a couple hundred different places, this next location, once again, it just looks too perfect to be something that is just a result of natural occurrences. This looks like an artificially constructed road and and island. If you look at the what's going on in the uh, the Spratleys, what China is doing, this is the best analogy that I can give for this. Is that this was all water at one time, and they constructed this uh, this pathway, and it continues inland. Here's another one that comes out, and when you look at it, like I said, from a distance from above it just doesn't look natural and this tunnel that and we've covered these before that goes off to the interior clearly goes down under the ice and then disappears this next one we have seen structures like this all over down here for some reason, there are things that have clearly been blacked out. Now this, for lack of a better term, um, this ribbing that we have uncovered is evidence of something down there. Something different than the areas around it. And this might be some type of a vent. It could be some type of an exit structure. Um, there might have been a civilization down here when the climate was very, very different, and they have had to make adaptation for continued operations, and this just might be evidence of it. And the last place we're going to go, once again, is what looks very much like a port structure. Now, to see this one, this technique that I talked about with uh, shading... I have the shading up right now, but let me show you what this would look like without it. Just a giant white sheet, but we turn on the shading. It darkens it just a little, just enough to see this right here. These rivers of ice, I believe at one time, were rivers of water. And whatever happened down here happened very, very quickly. And that's the allegation science is making now. That while they thought at one time the, um, the warming, the effect, the melt would happen over decades and decades and centuries, that they're seeing now that sometimes it happens much, much quicker. Which I think might make them revisit some of their um, statements about how old certain things are, and the amount of time that it took for certain things to occur, that all might get very much shortened. One of the odd things that kind of um, goes with Venezuela about this is that I believe it was Arthur C. Clarke that wrote The Lost World, and it's about Venezuela. There are parts of South America and northern Brazil southeastern Venezuela, that no modern man has ever set foot on, has ever seen. It was only a couple of years ago that they found an entire tribe of human beings that had never seen modern man. So the idea that something like that could exist down here is very plausible. In fact, it's more than plausible. Because man adapts. We adapt to all sorts of different environments. You know, jungle and ice, there's people that even live in Siberia. You know, the, the heat of Africa, it's, uh, we will find a way. Life always seems to find a way on this planet. And the more we look at these structures and look from above and look historically, which is the key in changing aspects, um, 
there are maps out there that are a lot more detailed than the ones that Google Earth Pro does, but they don't have all of the other um, abilities to go back through time and change aspect on. I think there's honestly locations and um, places down here where there's imagery that not even Google knows it has. I mean, they just sent up the sats, they took the pictures, they took them from all different angles, they compiled everything, and probably just made the giant assumption that the image that you're looking at here would be all the farther anyone would go. And just since October, if you look at all of the different pins and locations, that's what we've been able to uncover. Just taking the time to look at things um, slowly and critically. So we will leave it there um, and let you guys, like I said, I'll put all of these coordinates of those, I think it was six locations, and let you guys find them for yourself. But the more we look at it, the more it's becoming very apparent that something is happening in Antarctica and they're not going to be able to keep it secret much longer. Like, share, subscribe. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time. 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Chris King. Isn't the land a site off-world, sir?